Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. My name's Sarah, if you're new here. I started this channel to document my journey becoming a single mother by choice by going through IVF, as well as getting diagnosed with endometrial cancer, I'm now cancer free, and PCOS. Um, so if any of those topics appeal to you at all or apply to you at all, please be sure to hit the subscribe button and click the notification bell if you wanna be updated anytime I upload new videos. So I wanted to update you guys and let you know I did get my test results back from my endometrial biopsy I had done on February 16th. One of the biopsies was for the ERA test, endometrial receptivity analysis. Um, and that, um, if you're not, um, familiar is basically checking to see if your uterine lining is receptive to implantation of an embryo at the time of biopsy. So um, you do a mock embryo transfer cycle, start off with estrogen or however you are doing your um, embryo transfer, and then uh, you start progesterone and oil injections uh, 120 hours before the biopsy. And uh, like I've said in past videos um, about the ERA, most women, um, iGenomics says about 75% of women, I believe um, their uterus will be receptive after those 120 hours of progesterone, but about 25% of women either um, are pre-receptive at that time, meaning they need more time on progesterone, or they're post-receptive at that time, meaning that they need less time on progesterone. Um, so that window of implantation is not the same for every woman, um, and it's a pretty narrow time frame. So it's pretty important to get that timing correct to have a successful embryo transfer. So, um, I am going to insert a little clip here. Um, several videos videos ago when I discussed wanting to do the ERA, um, I had a feeling about what my results would be. I don't know why I have this like gut feeling. I feel like I might be um, one of those women who needs more time on progesterone. And I was right. My results came back pre-receptive. The results stated that I need 13 hours more of progesterone than what I had at the time of biopsy. So I need to start progesterone 13 hours before the typical 120 hours, which is five days. So um, that getting that news was um, really comforting to me in a way because that could have been the only reason why my first transfer ended in a biochemical pregnancy. Um, because the way I look at it, like my embryo was put in, you know, 13 hours too early. And um, so by the time my uterine lining was receptive, the embryo had been waiting to implant. And so it started to implant and that's why I got those faint positives but then it never like fully implanted because it was just too late at that time. So these results give me hope because um, that could have been the only thing. That could have been the only thing that we need to change for the next transfer. Um, so yeah, so those are my results and I'll put a little screenshot in here um, showing like what um, it looks like. It's kind of like a little graph um, that they show you where uh, you fall um, on the receptive uh, continuum, I guess you could call it. So I am right at the line between pre-receptive and receptive. So, um, so yeah, so those are the results of my ERA and we will obviously apply uh, those findings to my next transfer and the protocol we use. Um, it kind of stinks because my clinic only does embryo transfers between, I think it's like 1 p.m. and 3.30 p.m., I want to say. So I'm going to have to do my first progesterone shot at like 
midnight, depending on if my transfer is between one, like if it's at one, I'll have to do my first shot at midnight. But if it's at like 3.30, I'm gonna have to do my first shot at like 2.30 in the morning. Whew, that is gonna be so late for me to stay up. Or I'll just go to sleep and like set an alarm and wake up and do it, but that's gonna stink. So my Receptiva DX results um, came back also. And what that test um, is looking for is um, a marker called BC, what's it, BCL6. And if there is a certain level, um, I think it has to be above, is it 1.4? See, I have my results in front of me here. Yeah, 1.4. So if the BCL6 level is above 1.4, that is um, considered positive for endometriosis. And um, I also added on the uh, CD138 marker, and that checks for endometritis, which is inflammation in the uterus. Um, so I uh, my results came back showing that my BCL6 score was 0.9, which is less than 1.4, which means I do not have endometriosis. I didn't think I had endometriosis, but I just wanted to rule it out because sometimes women can have endometriosis and not even know it, um, not have any symptoms, and that could be a cause of infertility. So I just wanted to make sure that I didn't have to worry about that, so I don't. So that's really good. And then the CD138 marker also came back negative, so I do not have endometritis either. So um, I'll put a little screenshot in here of um, a little snippet from the results that shows um, the final diagnosis. Um, so it also said that I was negative for polyps, negative for atypical change, so that's all good news and I'm really, really happy and relieved. Um, if I did have endometriosis, I'd either need surgery or have to go on, I believe it's Lupron Depot. I don't remember. I feel like I've heard about it before, but apparently it puts your body into like menopause and you would have to do that for like two to three months before starting an embryo transfer and I did not want to do that. So I'm really, really thankful um, that I don't have endometriosis and um, it's just good to know that I don't have endometritis because if you have that, it's not a big deal. Uh, you just take antibiotics for a period of time um, and that cures that pretty much every time. But I hate being on antibiotics, so I'm just glad I don't have to be on antibiotics. So. All in all, these results are awesome news for me and my future um, transfer. So feeling really good still. I'm still in the two week wait of um, waiting for my PGTA results, which of course I will share with you as soon as I get those. Um, and I'm also still waiting for my period to start. Um, so I, should have probably gotten it by now, um, according to the nurses. Um, if after a Lupron trigger shot, you're supposed to get your period within a week um, after retrieval. But my first egg retrieval after the Lupron, um, I got my period 10 days later, and tomorrow will be 10 days after my retrieval. So I'm kind of expecting to get it tomorrow um, if my body responds the same way. I've been crampy for like six days now, so I know it's coming. It's just I wanted to come quickly so that I can call my clinic and schedule my HSG. That's my next step. I My last test that I wanna do, just wanna make sure my tubes are good and rule out a hydrocell pinks. And um, after I do that, then my next cycle, I will be able to transfer as long as I have some normal embryos or at least one normal embryo. Um, so that's the plan. Those are my ERA and Receptiva results. Um, I will link my video explaining how the um, endometrial biopsy process was for me. I'll link that here for you um, if you're curious about that. And um, I'll let you guys know when I get my HSG scheduled 
and I will see you very soon and I hope you have a great rest of your weekend and I will um, keep you guys posted. So see you very soon on my next video. Thank you guys.